Hello, welcome to this episode of our Game Dev Story series, Game Guru Max Tuned with Intel GPA. I am Pamela Harrison from Intel. I'm a software technical consulting engineer for Intel Graphics Performance Analyzers. I help game developers use GPA to find bottlenecks in their games. I'm here today with Lee Bamber of the Game Creators, who will guide you through a use case profiling his application. Our partner, Lee Bamber, is a self-described old-school coder who has been creating games and game-making tools since the era of 8-bit computers. Over the last 30 years, he has been responsible for titles such as Dark Basic, The 3D Game Maker, App Game Kit, and most recently, Game Guru Classic. He speaks to us from his home studio in Wales in the UK. Lee. What are you passionate about and why did you start using GPA? Well, I've been passionate about game makers for decades now. I started in 1999, if you can believe it. Um, and GPA I've been using for many years. Uh, the product I'm working on right now is a product called Genguru Max, which lets anyone create their own first person 3D games. And modern games, not only do they need great visuals and great gameplay, they also need to be performant. And that's why we use GPA. Okay, so you use GPA to gain performance. Why use this profiler? Well, we use GPA to lift the lid, if you like, on our game engine. It's all very well creating a game engine, but you want to know what's really going on. And when we want to optimize, there's two options. You can optimize in the blind, or you can see exactly what's going on and then optimize the part that you've identified as being the problem for your performance. So that's why we use GPA. So you can see things under the hood. What's really going on underneath? Absolutely, yes. Um, it means, you know, we can see right away that, oh, wow, that's taking like way too long to pr process. And we can go in and actually find out why that's happening. And you can't really do that any other way. You need to be able to see it happen to identify exactly which bit of code is responsible so then you can fix it. So what was the state of your engine when you started using GPA? It was pretty good. It was pretty good. We've been making game makers for years and years. So we've pretty much got that part down. But here's the part that you can never get right, even if you've been doing it for decades. It's the assumptions that you make. The assumptions that, oh, it's doing it this way and you still don't understand why you've got low performance. And it took us to go in with GPA to actually see that one of our assumptions was quite wrong. So what kinds of issues did you find? Well, there was a couple of issues, but the big one, which was pretty obvious relatively quickly. I mean, there is a mountain of data to get through, but when we actually drilled down, we found out that there was this single object, this object, rendering over and over and over again. And it took up so much processing time rendering this object over and over again. So that was a pretty important issue that we found. Tell us more about that one. How do you figure that out from the mountains of data that GPA collects? Well, the way I use it is the first thing I do is I run the game till I find the point of low performance. And then I do what's called a frame capture, which grabs all the information for a single frame of the game. Then I take that information into GPA, I collapse all of the segments, and then I set the metrics to something called GPU time, which is a really good metric because it shows you from left to right the entire frame, and it also shows proportionally how long each section is going to take. Our games engine is basically broken up into four pieces. We have a depth pass, shadow rendering, render target, and post-processing. And what we found was in two of those sections, that was taking up most of the performance. And when we drilled in, we actually found that same scenario. All of these tiny little draw calls taking up all of the performance. And when we drilled down, thanks to GPA, it actually show us a model of what it looks like. And it was a tree. It turned out it, turned out it was a tree that was causing all of this performance problem for us. Whoa. A single tree? 
<laughs> it was a single tree. It was rendered a hundred times, but yes, it was the same model rendered over and over again, and it was extremely inefficient to do it that way. Did you find more occurrences of that sort of draw call inefficiency? Not really. No, that was the real criminal. That was the biggest problem that we found on that first pass. As I say, we've been doing it for years. We know to do game engines and graphics engines, and we're pretty good. But here's the thing. As good as you can ever be, it's when you make that assumption and you don't go and investigate. That's when it's going to get you. And even today, you know, you need tools that strip away those assumptions and let you see what's actually going on. And that's what we was able to do um, in this particular instance. So once you found the cause of the inefficiency, how did you resolve that bottleneck? Well, there's usually two options, isn't there? There is, there's a rewrite or there's an optimize. Now, we probably would have gone the optimize route. That's usually the quickest way to get something fast again, move on to the next piece of code you need to write. But the team had another request. They needed an order of magnitude more trees than we were currently rendering. 100 or 200 trees wasn't enough. We need a lot more trees than that. So the option was taken to do a rewrite of that system. So we could basically throw away all of that problem code that caused the performance and then write it again with performance in mind and the number of trees we needed in mind as well. That sounds pretty intense. How long did it take you to make those changes? Well, um, I wanted it to take a week. <laughs> it didn't. It took like three weeks. Now, every time you push your development time, team members get quite angry because obviously lots of things need to be done. Uh, but in this particular case, I think the team were pretty happy. I think it took three, four weeks in total. But what we ended up with is a tree system that literally gave us an inexhaustible amount of trees to use, which of course was super useful for the team um, instead of just the one or 200, which you had to strategically place. It wasn't so efficient that way. So yeah, I think the team were pretty happy with that. Oh, it's great that the team was happy, even though the schedule was pushed out. And that's because of the significant gain? Um, it's because, you know, we want to make games and uh, we are working on different things like procedural generation. And some of the biomes that popped up, things like we want to create a rainforest or a, or a, a dense jungle. <laughs> you can't do that with a hundred trees. <laughs> we needed a lot more trees to be able to create that. So the team needed that. And by changing the technology and using GPA to figure out which bits to change, the team are now super happy now because they have the ability to just blanket the terrain with trees. Wonderful. Great impact to the team. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I think we're all in it to create great products. And uh, when they see the results and they know that that time was worth spending in this particular case, it was more than well worth doing that work. So how did you validate your assumptions that it was so much faster? Well, I'm old school, as you said in your introduction, and I like apples to apples comparisons. So let's take the old system. I rendered a hundred trees to the screen and we got sub per performance. Unacceptable for a game. A new system, and this is the same minimum spec system we tested it on, 400,000 trees and actually took less time to render in that game frame. So I'd say that's pretty conclusive. Nice. So 4,000 times faster and with time to spare. That's great. So a related question now, with the performance gain, are you looking to gain frames per second or do you think you'll add more components or features? Um, for us, for our team, the motivation is always performance. So when you start a game project, you've always got performance because there's nothing in your game, so everything's super fast. But as you add features, your performance drops. And for us, it's about bringing that performance back to acceptable levels. But as your project goes along, if you find yourself with excessive performance, performance to spend, it's then when you have the luxury of adding those cool new features for your games, or in our case, our games engine. Ah, that makes sense. That's fantastic. I love when GPA helps people. Now that we've talked about how GPA can help tremendously with performance, let's back up a bit. We jumped right into GPA without actually talking about what Game Guru Max is. We didn't say it's not a game, it's a game engine. Well, 
Okay, that was implied, maybe stated. But what would someone do if they got your game engine? They get your game engine. It has a lot of physics and functionality. They can add scenes pretty easily, maybe. They can add their own objects. Tell me about how a game developer would use it. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right on all those points. It's your game. So you can create everything. You can create the title screens for your game. Um, you can create different levels for your game, setting different biomes. So you could have Arctic or desert or forest or rainforest or other planets. For each of those levels, you can add the objects that you want. We provide over a thousand objects with built-in behaviors. So if you don't really want to get into coding or creating art, you just pick from our library, drop them in, and you've instantly made a game. Then you can save that game, package it up, and then you can share it with your friends, or you can even sell it. There's no restrictions on that. And yes, you can import objects from the outside world. The objects we provide will start you off, but you will ultimately want to create a game with your own ideas, your own artwork, your own sound effects, your own, you know, ideas going into the game that you can then call unique and then you can share with the world and they'll enjoy the ideas that you come up with. A lot of people, they need to be able to code or create art or be part of a large team in order to create a game of an idea that they've had. With Game Guru Max, you don't need any of that. You just have to install the software, use what we've provided, create a game very quickly. And it's very fun and a rewarding pursuit, very nice creative pursuit. And you've created something at the end of the day, which is uh, you can't compare that. Wonderful. So Game Guru Classic is already out on market. Do you have a time expectation for Game Guru Max to be out? Yes, we do. We have two expectations. One is the end of, uh, sorry, the end of November which will be released as early access on Steam. So it's very soon indeed <laughs> at the time of this recording. And then we're going to release a what we call a full release in 2022. So you will be able to get your hands on it very soon. Thank you, Lee Bamber of The Game Creators. Check out the details of his coming game engine on his site. And get information about Intel GPA and download it for free on our site. Tune in for more episodes of our Game Dev Stories series.